Justin Hawkins writes again. Good day to you. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Writes Again, my YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and then sign up for those alerts so that every time I do a video, you'll be notified and you can uh, watch it accordingly as part of your daily ritual. Um, today I'm talking about a band that I really love. Uh, actually, a band that made an album that I really love. Um, I love this band's debut album. They're called Fontaines DC and they come from Ireland. I think they're from Dublin, maybe? I'm not just saying Dublin because it's the only place in Ireland that I know. I know lots of places in Ireland. Cork, but they're not from there. They're from Dublin, I think. Um, and the song that um, they've just released is called Jackie Down the Line. That first record, top to bottom, I absolutely love it. But there's one song on there, which was the song that got me into them. Um, it's called um, The Boys in the Better Land. And it has like this riff that goes. This is the chorus. I mean, it couldn't be any simpler. It's really satisfying. But the boys in the better land. And um, when the band comes in on that record, they're, they're sort of super trashy. There's, I think the, the drummer's probably hitting a main crash as using it as a ride cymbal. And there's all the, the sort of grace notes that make it sound like indie music. Both the guitars are just going for it. There's no definition in like um, whose role is what, but it's definitely like first album stuff and a band coming out the gates doing something that, that you just you know that's that that riff would be the envy of of pub rock bands up and down the world wouldn't it i mean it's just easy peasy you just point at people you know gesture to them it's just brilliant i mean and when you i never saw them live actually but i've i mean i've seen some footage of of uh, festivals but you hear anecdotes of of watching them in little pubs and it really kicking off and that's the song that does that and um, some of that first album is um a little bit sort of uh, it's more like indie light you know this uh, i don't know how to describe it really but it is it is definitely sounds indie sounds like 90s indie a lot of that's in the way the drumming is approached um but you know i i kind of didn't listen to anything else that they released after that they had another album that was really well received critically acclaimed even let me have a look at some facts for you they formed in dublin in 2017 and they met whilst attending music college and bonded over a common love of poetry that's why their lyrics are really really good always they released two collections of poetry wow one called vroom inspired by the beat poets and another called winding uh, inspired by irish poets um fontaine's dc received uh, tour support from Irish Arts Council which allowed them to tour internationally that's cool okay so the first album Dog Roll that's the one that I love um, it was released in 2019 widespread uh, critical acclaim album of the year on Rough Trades website album of the year by presenters on BBC Radio 6 um, nominated for the Mercury Music Prize so the second album I didn't even listen to it I, I just I think I was uh, I was done really I am um, I didn't need more of it. That first album is so perfect and exciting. Just wasn't interested really. So that is the good thing about this channel is that now I'm um, obliged to um, regard another section of their catalogue that I might not have got around to listening to. So the new album uh, uh, is called Skinny Fear and it's coming out this year apparently. So presumably this is a single from it. I'm going to watch it, react to it, tell you what I think, honestly. Okay, it's the nonchalance in the video is um, it's nonchalance par excellence. Um, they're really going for the we don't particularly care that we're here. The singer's walking around, sort of seems to be sort of um, adjusting his sweatshirt a bit so that some air comes through the neck hole. But he might be getting a bit too warm under the studio lights. Um, strolling through uh, a whole load of roses, red roses that are, that are strewn across the floor. Um, one of them is actually sitting down. He can't even bother to stand up. Um, various knitwear, single-breasted suit on the drummer, and a and a character that with a pointy hat on. Um, who later it turns out, I'm just skipping through to <laughs> to see what happens later. Later it turns out that when he takes his hat off, he has no hair, so he's bald. Um, 
But yeah, the set looks like a promotional photograph for American Beauty because there's roses everywhere. And at one point they're laying down in it, perhaps dead? Not sure. Um, let's get on to the music itself. Okay, so it just cycles around two chords, I think for the whole song really. It's like G to B, it seems like. Um, the drummer's hitting the ride cymbal as opposed to the hi-hat, so it's just this washy kind of indie beat. Um, two chords. Um, I like the way they've, they've, um, they've established what the two guitar players' roles are now. I think on the first record it was really just everyone playing everything and it was cool. Um, but you can't sustain that unless you just want to be like the indie band. Um, and I think now one of them's holding it down, the other one's doing some sort of interesting, um, you know, major seventh-y stuff um, with a with a nice echoey sound. There's a solo that goes, um, um, walks around some interesting notes around this area, um, but um, with a Leslie effect on, which is the spinning speaker usually associated with the Hammond organ. Um, but overall, it just seems to be like the band is providing, um, you know, just a just a bit of music that you can say his poem over. And you know, on the first watch, you'd, I'm not really. I love this band. I want it, I want to love it, but um, it doesn't really excite me in the way that. <laughs> So I think this is an, inst uh, an odd choice for a single, actually. I mean, it's, this is, sounds like what one of the sort of album tracks from the first record, but, you know, produced a bit more carefully. Um, it definitely sounds, sounds great. I mean, it's, in terms of the way it's recorded and stuff, you can't argue with the engineering, but it's just that it's, it's just this. I mean, that's, I don't know, for me it's... It's probably a really good poem. It's probably a really good poem. But it's going to take a couple of listens to get it. I don't, I don't feel like watching a uh, lyric video because those things are often wrong as well. But, um, okay. But the aesthetic's really nice. It doesn't have... On first listen, it doesn't have the same melancholy that, say, I don't know, Radiohead would have. Um, because it doesn't have the same dynamics and drama in it. He's, I mean, the nonchalance, I think, can work against you when the song is like that. I think if it doesn't have like a second, at least a second passage with a discernible change in the approach to the chord changes and, and so on, or the chord sequence rather, I just feel like it needs something else for me, you know? And this is, I want to love it, but I just can't. I can't love this. <laughs> I'm not capable of loving this. I... Want to? I'm excited that they're doing really well. I think they deserve it because this is a band that really cares about lyrics, and um, <clears throat> I am, I really care about lyrics. I know that <laughs> probably our most famous song has got some really dumb ass lyrics on it, but overall, I spend a lot of time on it, and <clears throat> and it always drives me mad when I see things like "crazy" being rhymed with "baby." It just that doesn't rhyme. It doesn't rhyme. It doesn't even sound good. Stop doing it. But everyone fucking does it. It's really annoying. Um, sometimes I write a song and then the other person says, oh, what about if we add this line? And I'm like, okay, crazy and baby. There it is. Fucking useless. Um, but they won't do it. This isn't the crazy baby. This isn't the crazy baby band. This is a, ba this is a band that cares about words, understands poetry. And uh, they're worth persevering with. But I feel like this is something that would have been considered an album track on the first record. Um, despite how beautifully produced it is and how nice their knitwear has become over the years um anyway i love fontaine's dc i'm sorry i couldn't say much more in the positive realm for it but uh i'm going to keep coming back and i hope you do too don't forget to like subscribe um click on that one that gives you alerts justin hawkins writes again and uh you know watch one of these two videos nice that was my stomach.